Okay, I have my onion soup bowl with some water in it. And uh, right here, I have some shea butter from Hickory Hill Farm in Godfrey, Illinois. This is uh, some homemade stuff that I scored at the recent, um, it was a, a Civil War encampment. And um, they had actual soap makers there. And this is a, a good shaving soap, they said. So we're going to find out for certain if that's the case. <laughs> okay, we're gonna stick that in there. Got a little water with it. Just uh, gonna speed up the process just a bit by about um, 25 seconds. Hi everybody, you just saw the little shea butter soap that I had blooming in the microwave. This is from Hickory Hill Farm. For those of you that uh, would like to write that down, that's their phone number, 618-466-1908. Hickory Hill Farm in Godfrey, Illinois. And that's uh, where I got this. Actually, they were doing a, an arts and crafts type uh, show at uh, Massac County, Illinois in their uh, encampment. They have a Civil War uh, reenactment, battle reenactment every year in an encampment where they have all kinds of uh, food and vendors and displaying their wares, arts and crafts, and oh man, some marvelous food. Buffalo chili, <laughs> my favorite, giant turkey legs, <laughs> people walking around in period clothing. There are actual Indians uh, that were at the fort originally. The fort is still standing, by the way. It's been uh, refurbished, of course. Uh, and uh, they even have their teepees set up, and you can go visit with them. You uh, can actually watch crafts as uh, the artisans are uh, making them right there. I mean, they dip candles on the scene, uh, on the location. Uh, you can even watch them as they make the food. They have their pots of chili boiling in giant cauldrons over an open fire, and you get to sample some of that wonderful food. And I love their, well, I love the chili, of course, but they have some other great things, too. They have ribs and, and everything you can think of that was uh, available back in those days. Corn on the cob, that's fantastic. Um, they even make um, pig skins, pig rinds. <laughs> and they make them right there. And you can actually get a sample or you can buy a whole bunch and eat or just take them home with you. And this is uh, one of the artisan's soaps that I just mentioned from Godfrey, Illinois. And it smells great. This one is, um, their shea butter from Hickory Hill Farms. And I've had it uh, blooming in some, some water that I had in the microwave. So now the bottom half of this soap is really moist. And that's what it looks like, a giant bar. <laughs> and that was just five bucks. So what I'm going to do right now, I was going to put on some pre-shave oil but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to just rub some of this bloom water on because it smells great, number one. Number two, it's like so, look at this. It's, it's so slick. The bloom water is just automatic soap almost. Just the bloom water itself. So I'm putting the bloom water on and it's turning into soap. Can, can you believe that? Isn't that awesome? Now that's the way they made soap back in the day and that's the way it should be made. Okay. I'm going to put the soap back inside the bowl, wash my hand, and wet my brush. Today's brush is a badger and blade bore bristle. And I'm just loading it up from this giant bar. I wanted to call it a puck, but it's it's more than a puck. What the puck are you thinking? It's not a puck. That's a bar. 
a giant bar. So I have completely loaded up my brush right now just by just by touching it on like this. But I did uh, reverse the bar. It, it was upside down in the bowl and the water didn't, co didn't quite cover the entire bar. So the soft portion was the bottom, which is now the top. And I'm going to uh, set that over here on the side. But man, that's some good stuff. It really is good product. That's made the way that uh, soap should be made. And look at that. And I asked, I said, is that a good lathering shave soap? And the old gentleman, it was his wife that's making it. He said, I don't know, I don't use it. <laughs> At least he was honest about it, you know. I'm going to make some uh, lather in my bowl here, put some hot water in with this. I should have saved some of the bloom water. I did a little bit, not enough, obviously. But see what it did just by rubbing the bristles on my face? That's awesome. Wow. It feels good to just sort of uh, step back into time, doesn't it? just to uh, use some vintage items. Straight razor, that's vintage, Wade and Butcher, eight eighths in size is the one I'm using today. And this wonderful soap. It really does whip up a lather a lot more than uh, I would probably need. But I'm still going to load up some from the brush, uh, from the bar onto my brush. Because I, I think I put a little too much water in with it. But it does a great job. I like the way it lathers. It smells nice. Smells very clean and you can smell this shea butter. They didn't add any other scents to this. Although, <laughs> although I do have some uh, essential oils that I bought from them that I could add myself to this if I wanted for scent. I got some uh, frankincense that I got from them. Gonna get a little more water here. Got some frankincense essential oils. I mean, this is the uh, the full strength essential oils. The kind of if you rub it on your skin and you have allergies, you're going to know it immediately. So you have to use a, I just keep getting it all over me. You have to use something that will more or less water that down. I can't think of what it's called when they do that, but it's uh, something they use to water down the soap or the uh, oils. And that's uh, another oil, like uh, a base oil would be like, uh, anything out of the kitchen. Vitamin E oil would work. In case you uh, ever put too much of that on your skin, you'll know what to do. And if it is a truly full essential oil, that's getting to the good consistency that I like. I like a slick coat, and that's what I'm working for right now. Sure, it's taking a little extra time. Hey, but that, that's okay because 
time is on my side. Yes, it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm feeling wild today. Feeling much better, actually, because um, I have been in bed the past two days. Mm-hmm. Since, uh, well, s Saturday, I hurt my back. I went to uh, a doctor on the way home from the encampment. The doctor said that uh, I thought for sure I had a kidney problem because it was in a different location than where I normally have back pain. Anyway, so uh, I went to the doctor and she said, no, I didn't have a kidney situation going. No kidney stones or uh, in bladder infections, no UTIs, urinary tract infections, nothing like that. So uh, she said, it's just your back. You've got a bad back, sir. Thank you very much. I knew that ahead of time. <laughs> now give me my 60 bucks, she said, and, and go on with yourself. <sighs> but she did give me something to remember her by other than the bill. A shot in the booty. Gave me a big old shot. Ow. Man. Someone said to me the other day, I had a shot when I was a kid. I thought, dang, if I had a dollar for every time I've had to get a shot. <laughs> I guess I've uh, been one of those kinds of guys that's had to have a few extra shots in my day. All right. This consistency is really pretty nice. It's not where I want it though, to be honest. So I'm going to use something else. This is Beard Lube, Jack Black's Beard Lube. Now this stuff says it's a pre-shave oil, but it's also a shave cream and a skin conditioner all in one. So what I'm going to do is I was going to I was planning on using this as an aftershave. I'm just going to add this to it to see what kind of combination we end up with. Just I just like to find out. And that's what working with products and soaps is all about. Right? Sure. Jack Black's Beer Lube Conditioning Shave with jojoba and eucalyptus. And I can really smell the eucalyptus already. It smells nice. Wow. <laughs> I think I might want to add a little bit of water. I am really playing in the stuff today, aren't I? I guess you can tell on one of those days that you want, you see somebody wanting to mess around a little bit instead of getting to the point. I just, I just want to experiment with this stuff and see what, what it does. Now this is really making a great lather mixing it in with that soap. Wow, look at that. That's a nice lather right there. I mean, it's good and thick and slick. Got a little too much bubbles on it where I whipped it up rather fast. But, I mean, all, overall, that's a, a good lather. I like this boar bristle brush from Badger and Blade. It does a great job. I think that is <laughs> the consistency I like right there. And I'm not going any further. That's perfect. Perfection.
All right, I'm wiping my hands down and uh, the razor today I mentioned earlier is going to be my Wade and Butcher, some vintage razor right here, an 8 8 Look at that big old chunk. And I love this razor, it does a great job. I just hit it up on the strop a little bit. Going to remove my glasses for the first down pass. The reason being, I tend to put a wrong kind of angle to try to get in behind my glasses there and I end up putting a little cut on my face, always. So, here we go. Wow, that thing is really doing a great job. This soap is finally in perfect order. I think I like it. And I know that I like the Jack Black product, especially since I can use it for a pre or a post shave. Now I can see what I'm doing here. Don't want to get too much out of the way and cut too much into my beard. That uh, eucalyptus really brings on some a scent of uh, menthol. <laughs> Maintaining my razor, making sure that it's not a little too damp. I, I've had issues in the past with uh, my razor being too uh, wet and having uh, slippage. I don't want a slippage. Soap did sort of dissipate, didn't it? This may be something that I'll let the, the wife use in the tub. Nah, she's got her own soap. She won't want this stuff. She does. She has some new Barrister and Man Velvet for women. She loves it. Guess I'll be trying to restock with that stuff from here on out. But I'll use this stuff occasionally, I'm sure. May even just turn it into a good bath soap. <clears throat> it would do a great job as that, wouldn't it? I think so. Great bath soap. Okay, I'm going to do under my beard. doing a great job. I'm surprised that this soap has uh, taken on such a, a great texture to it. In the beginning, it, it just wasn't there. And, but uh, when I added the Jack Black, it did a good job. That was what it needed, I think. Okay, downward pass now.
two-day beard, by the way. I have been uh, bedridden, so I haven't been doing any shaving. Got a bunch of whiskers, though. Yeah, I haven't been doing any shaving. It's sort of hard when you're bedridden. The only thing I don't like about this soap is it, it's dissipating really quickly. I mean, that's nothing major, of course. But I love this razor. <laughs> this razor is hoss. This is the boss. Until I get a bigger one in, and then that one will be the boss, I guess. I do have another one on order. Uh, this is an 8 8 size. And um, I have a Silver Loaf Biggin Custom 9 8 on order. That did a great job. Missed one little spot in the center there. I'll go ahead and take care of that now. You could just hear it, couldn't you? <laughs> and you know, a one pass right there would make, make this shave perfect. I mean, I could just go ahead and stop. But we want to have a close shave. Yeah, see how quickly this stuff dissipates? I mean, it goes on great. See that? That looks nice. That's the kind of lather that texture that I like. Going ahead and lathering up my neck so that it can uh, moisturize the beard and the whiskers. But that right there is just perfect. But you watch it and it will dissipate. It will just disappear right before your eyes. And that's a bad thing for me. I don't like that. Oh well, let's go ahead. Do a, I guess I need to do a, an upward pass. I like that barber's notch. That's very handy, the barber's notch on the end, that piece there, so that uh, it makes it lots easier to get in and out of the nooks and crannies. It's perfect for uh, getting underneath your, your nose area. Now see how this is already dissipated? and the neck. I mean, it's almost like invisible. I mean, it's there, the texture, and you know, you can still feel it, but it's just not uh, holding out like it should. But that's just an old recipe. It's an old, old, very old recipe for this particular soap. This is a shea butter soap. That's all it is. I'm sure it's got, you know, lye and uh, whatever else they put in it. Not much else though. Now see that, that looks nice. That's how I like it right there. Smooth, thin, but Give it a minute, it'll go. It'll disappear. 
that's okay. Making sure I get a little close shade with this one. Still getting those little bitty tiny beard whiskers. And that's what I'm wanting to do. That's why I went back over it a couple of extra times, extra passes. And now my neck is completely gone, <laughs> almost. That is wild how that just sort of disappears. So it takes a little extra time, a little extra effort. But that's the way they did it years ago. They didn't have a lather that sort of stuck around for an hour. I'm sure they didn't. Let's see. Well, we'll do a downward pass once again. And then I check it out to see what uh, the pass did. And if it shows that it got some tiny whiskers, I know I did the right thing. And it did. I am finished. That was the last little pass right there. And I'm going to have to close up this big old razor if I can get enough energy to do it. And when I get finished with my shave, the first thing I do is I clean it up and then I And then after I clean it up, I always go and strop it. That removes any soap particles or anything else that might be in the, the little small minute micron area that you might only see if you are viewing it under a microscope. And that's, that's why I do that because I've seen what it looks like under a microscope. Man, can't believe this lighting is doing so wild. It's been doing that lately. Wash out is what it's called, I believe. Wash out. Man, that's a smooth shave right there. That is tremendous. I have just shocked myself. I'm serious. I have never been as, I guess as uh, lucky to get a complete perfect shave with a straight razor until just now, just recently. And I'm very thankful to all of my friends and buddies who have helped me and uh, given me their skills, passed them on to me. Just little tips, tidbits here and there awesome people out there. This is my Bay Rum. I have a new cork on it and uh, this thing is ready to go. Virgin Island Bay Rum. Pinodes, this is the uh, Pinode. Wow. 
Bay Rum. Love the smell of this stuff. Club Man Pinot's Bay Rum makes some good quality product, in my opinion. I like it. And that's my vintage bottle. One of the clam broth, that's what this is called, the clam broth style vintage 1900s barbershop bottles. And I keep saying I'm going to do an updated video, and I am, on my barbershop bottles. Okay, now this stuff is supposed to be great for a post-shave. It says right here that uh, you can penetrate below the surface to soften whisker growth for an easier, closer shave with no razor burn. And uh, it's a pre-shave oil, shave cream, and skin conditioner. So it's good for pre, during, or post, or all three. And it says the transparent lotion lets you see where you're shaving for fewer nicks and cuts. Beard lube rinses easily and won't clog your blade. Hmm. It's, it's got the Pure Science uh, logo on it. I don't know if you saw that or not, but anytime you see that, you automatically know that it's full of natural ingredients, no parabens or anything like that. Um, I'm sure that's what it says here somewhere. Oh, pure science formulas lock in nature's best with certified natural organic ingredients. No fragrance or colorants. Yeah. So, uh, since I went ahead and used this as my pre-shave and part of my during, I'm going to put some on as post-shave. Smells nice. The eucalyptus is a good menthol that I'm hunting for right now because after my shave, I want that to be uh, prevalent in my uh, in my skin because I know that's going to help in rejuvenate, revitalize the skin. And there we have it. Some Jack Black product. Nice stuff. As far as the Hickory Hill Shea Butter Old Timey Soap goes, some old timey people made this from an old timey recipe. And I enjoyed shaving with it just for the sake of saying that I've done it. And it means a lot to me to be able to step back in time and to do things like that. And that's why I enjoy using a straight razor too instead of some of the newfangled quadruple micro Mach 12,000 blades that are out. I have reached ho status, baby. You bet. I thank you guys for watching and I thank you for spending your time with me. Be sure and pay it forward when you get the chance. If you don't have the chance, make the opportunity to pay something forward to someone out there. Your friends will appreciate it and it's a good thing to have karma on your side. That's how I feel. Thanks once again. Peace.